It's a valuation work on the uh, uh, semi-analytic resampling. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Tomoyuki Oguchi and uh, Takahashi, uh, Takashi Takahashi in my group. Okay, let's start with the background and uh, motivation. Okay, uh, roughly speaking, I think that the machine learning problem is uh, formulated as follows. Okay, uh, given a data set, uh, okay. input and output uh, pairs, a number of input and pairs, and uh, the task is to tune the parameter so that an assumed model optimally fits the data set. So for this setup, uh, there are two major discussion issues. The first one is the algorithm development. So the task, how to find the optimal uh, parameter W star. So uh, handling this, uh, uh, there are many, many proposals. So back, pro back propagation or the formulated uh, problem with a convex realization form and the propagation and the MP, SGD, Adam, et cetera, right. And uh, uh, I have an impression that uh, uh, this uh, issue uh, has been uh, actively discussed uh, in the last decade. But we have another uh, important problem. So reliability assessment. So this is formulated as uh, how reliable is a land parameter W star. For this evaluation, so there are many, many proposals. The first one probably the cross-validation or information criterion, empirical base, and resampling. But well, this is uh, we focus on here. And uh, compared to the former one, uh, I think the uh, last decade, this was not so, well, actually this is important, but uh, not uh, compared to the, uh, the first one, uh, it is not so uh, actively discussed, but uh, will be actively discussed soon, maybe, I believe it. So we focus on the, this issue. So, among them, what is uh, resampling or the bootstrap? This is proposed by the Professor Efron in 1981, a method, a numerical method, to assess the reliability of the land parameter from the single land data set. So, can evaluate the error bars from a single data set, right? And the outline of the bootstrap resampling is very simple. Okay, we imagine that we are uh, given the data set dm, like this, oh, sorry, this one. And uh, from this, we uh, make uh, empirical distribution, right? Just a histogram. And the uh, bootstrap just repeat this process. So evaluate uh, parameter distribution by repeating the following sufficient many times, just repeat many times. So first one is the generation of the bootstrap sample. So from the uh, given data set, we resample the data of the, mostly the same size. And for the, uh, the, uh, for the uh, generated data, we learn the parameter, just it. And repeat this many times. Then so we can get uh, some histogram of the distribution uh, of the uh, land parameter. So this provides a kind of the reliability for the land parameter. Okay. So, of course, there are a good point and a bad point for the, uh, the resampling problem. The good point is uh, general versatility. So, so simple, so it is applicable to any data sets and any line algorithm as long as ID assumptions are acceptable, right? Always we can do that. And algorithm simplicity, just repeat the resampling and learning, just resampling and learning. So, uh, so very, very simple. But, of course, there are uh, bad points. The first one is the computational burden. Since we have to repeat the resampling and learning many times, uh, this can be a computation too heavy when the learning or inference is performed numerically. Okay? And the other one is uh, the insufficiency uh, of the theoretical support. So we want to know the, uh, the, uh, the uncertainty of the land parameters without knowing the true distribution. Uh, so that we replaced it by the uh, resampled uh, the bootstrap uh, statistics. But the relationship between the true and the bootstrap statistics is generally unclear 
particularly in the non-asymptotic regime. So this is very, very difficult problem. So I think that this is always uh, still an open problem in general. But here, we just focus on the, uh, the first problem, okay? How to reduce the computational burden. Hi. Yeah. Could some sample be just from the empirical data? Yeah. True one. Yeah. This is just a gib given data, okay? We, we have a given data set, just a resample from it. Okay. So highly biased in general. So object of this talk is that uh, for particular uh, model, so for generalized linear models, we develop approximate algorithm for evaluating bootstrap statistics without actually uh, performing resampling. Uh, this is by, uh, done by combining the replica method and uh, message passing type algorithms. Okay. And the idea for this uh, so using a replica method for the resampling problem is firstly proposed by the Marzan and Oppa 2003 uh, for Gaussian process regression. Here, uh, we develop a new computationally uh, efficient algorithm uh, based on their idea, right, for generalized linear model. And uh, for simplicity, in the following, we focus on the L1 regularized regressions, so lasso, but extension to other regularizers is straightforward. Okay, then what is Lasso? Lasso uh, in GLM, a generalized linear model. So we consider such a situation, we have a data set Y and X, and the number of the data samples are M, okay? Uh, a number of explanatory variables is N, okay? And Y is termed objective uh, variable, okay? Uh, we consider such situations, we uh, have a uh, data set D at pair of X and Y. But in general, uh, the objective variable does not necessarily own the all explanatory variables. So it is very important in practical data analysis to determine the uh, relevant variables. So variable, variable selection problem, right? So uh, it is very difficult problem, but uh, about uh, uh, 25 years ago, Yes, uh, the, uh, Tibishirani, uh, Professor Tibishirani proposed a very good uh, method, practical method for this problem, uh, using the L1 penalty, Lasso. So, minimizing the following cost function, this is basically the uh, log likelihood, and plus the L1 penalty. And this is a convex problem, so easily performable. And uh, uh, then, the, by, minimize, min by minimizing this, and with risk to uh, the parameter w, then this cut down the irrelevant, irrelevant, not relevant parameters in a practical time. So we can do the variable selection in a practical time. So this is a core of the lasso. Okay, and uh, it is known, uh, in some sense, uh, mathematically proved that if lasso, uh, the lasso can successfully uh, select relevant variables, if Correlations among the explanatory variables are sufficiently weak. Okay? As long as uh, each column of X, uh, 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 the correlations are very uh, the weak, Lasso uh, actually uh, successfully managed to do the variable selection. But how unfortunately, when the co correlations of the explan uh, explanatory variables are not negligible, uh, there are solution passes. Uh, solution pass means that uh, this one. So the uh, profile of the uh, the component, uh, okay. in fact, the component uh, versus the strength of the regularization parameter. So this is solution pass. Uh, the solution pass is uh, exhibit unstable behavior. Uh, this makes the variable selection uh, difficult. Uh, this figure taken from uh, the, this paper. Uh, Mein uh, Shaosen and Burman uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, this is the uh, uh, result for the application of Lasso for uh, riboflavin data, the so, uh, production of the ribo riboflavin. Yes, a kind of uh, vitamin data. And in this case, is the number of data is uh, 100, and the number of uh, extracellular variable is uh, about 4,000. 
And uh, actually, it is known that six variables uh, denoted by lead are strongly correlated. Then you can see that they uh, exhibit very non-monotonic behavior, complicated behaviors. So it is very difficult to uh, select uh, some variables uh, among uh, the relevant variables among them. So, so uh, for the correlated variables, Lasso is not so robust. Yes. And they, they propose that uh, some uh, good method uh, for variable uh, selection uh, based on the resampling. This is shown later. Okay? So this is one of the uh, usefulness of resampling in the lasso. OK, so let's switch to the mathematical distribution. Okay? Uh, for this, uh, the, we introduce uh, some representation of the bootstrap samples. Okay? Okay, bootstrap sample is as follows. Okay, let's assume this is the uh, given data, original, uh, the given data, okay? And we resample the uh, data from this set, set uh, sam by sampling with replacement. Okay, this is the result. So then this means that x2, y2, this one is, uh, is sampled twice, okay? X3, Y3, this pair is uh, sampled once. X4, Y4 sampled once, but this is not sampled, okay? In this case, we can uh, characterize or specify this sample by the, uh, number, of uh, the, the, by the number of sample, uh, the being resampled, okay? In this case, uh, this and the, this vector, counting vector, 0, 2, 1, 1 is equivalent, okay? So we use uh, this notation for representing the uh, resampled data, okay? Then uh, we can show that the distribution of the resampled data can be uh, uh, represented by the polynomial, uh, multinomial distribution, like this form, right? This is uh, first uh, shown by the Marzan Oppa, the, the 2003, and for large, uh, when the MB the, the, or the M, okay, number, uh, the size of the data is large, this can be well approximated by the independent Poisson distribution, right? So the distribution of the resampled data is easy to handle, actually. It is uh, just a uh, production product of the independent Poisson distribution, okay? Then we can formally link the bootstrap average and the replica method by this formula, okay? Okay, we want to, okay, for the given resample data C, okay, this is, uh, this C special resample, uh, each resample data. Then uh, the error function for the lasso is given by this form, okay? Then uh, we can uh, introduce the partition function here, right? And in the beta infinity limit, we can get the lasso solution, okay? But we want to take an average with respect to the resampling from out, uh, the, uh, of the outside, from the outside. For this, we use a replica formula like this. For fixed D, okay, this is given data, uh, we vary the boost up average of the free energy using the replica method in conjunction with the mean field uh, uh, approximation, okay? So this is uh, just a replica formula, okay? So if we can do this computation for fixed D, we can evaluate bootstrap average. But of course, for given D, uh, computing the partition function is difficult. So resolving this difficulty we use certain kind of mean field approximation. Okay, this is the idea. So, for the first one is to use belief propagation, so cavity method, okay? So, our first idea is to uh, resolve the uh, difficulty of computing partial function by the cavity method. Okay, for this, uh, let's, okay, uh, this is uh, distribution. Conditioned by the boot uh, resampled data, a single resampled data. Okay. 
plug. Then we can draw uh, this kind of bipartite graph. This is the beginning of the Billish propagation. Okay? So then uh, for, for given this graph, we can uh, perform a Billish propagation here. But without doing this, we do the enriquicate system and uh, take the bootstrap average uh, for, or, or in this stage, right? But the, the replication does not change the structure of the graph. So the, this, uh, the graph is converted to this form, okay? And the, the factor here is uh, easily computed by, or the analytically computed by, the independent Poisson distribution, right? In this form. Then we can uh, construct belief propagation algorithm for the replicated graph, okay? So this is, uh, yes, uh, so computing the cavity bias and the computing cavity distribution, and after uh, the repeating this and having the co convergent solution, we can get the belief marginal, okay? For finite n, okay. But we have to take n zero limit. So how can we do that? For this, we introduce a replication metric ansatz. Okay, this, in this case, we can uh, state as follows. Parameterize a message in the following form, employing the replication metric ansatz or the exchangeability of the system and central limit theory. Then we can limit the functional form of the message to this form, just using three parameters, A, B, C, right? Then uh, this has a form that factorizes with, with respect to the le replica. So we can uh, derive, uh, then we can uh, analytically compute the expression to the uh, real n and take n the limit. Okay, this is after n. Then of the algorithm follows. Okay, after taking n the limit and beta infinity we can get an uh, algorithm to compute the three parameter A, B, C for each component, A, I, A, I, A for each entry, okay? Okay, this is the first result of our, uh, uh, our talk, right? Okay, validation by the synthetic data. So, the, to justify the obtained uh, the algorithm, we checked the uh, result between the, our derived algorithm and direct simulation of the resampling. Uh, this is for the first moment, this is for the uh, second moment. And uh, this is done by the n equal, uh, n equal 1,000 and the dead size uh, uh, 500. And uh, the number of non-zeros in true signals K, uh, 200. Okay, okay, noise and lambda here. And uh, you can see that both cases, uh, for both uh, first and second moment, uh, we, uh, we can get very accurate approximation for the bootstrap, uh, bootstrap statistics. Okay. Okay. Then, for what purpose do we use this technique? <laughs> okay. This is the second part is application of the developed algorithm. So this is uh, known to the stability selection. So we examine the practical uh, usefulness of the developed algorithm by the application to a new uh, recently proposed variable selection method for Lasso, uh, known as stability selection. And this is proposed by about uh, 10 years ago by uh, Meinstein and uh, Buhlmann. So what is the uh, stability selection? Okay. This is a robust variable selection method based on lasso and resampling. And basic idea is also simple. Okay. Uh, we combine the bootstrap and randomization of the L1 uh, strength, lambda. And this provides distribution of estimators 
then for each variable, we can evaluate the probability of uh, this is active, the component is non-zero or not, okay? By doing many uh, resampling, uh, the, uh, we can evaluate uh, the histogram of the uh, uh, zero or non-zero for each component. And if the, this pi i, the so active, probability, uh, active probability is sufficiently large, we judge this uh, component is uh, non-zero, so selected as a relevant parameter. And otherwise, we discard it. Okay, there are uh, several parameters, three parameters for this method. First one is the, uh, that how to randomize the lambda. So uh, we uh, introduce a, a dependence of lambda for each component, right? So, uh, and, uh, uh, so, so normally, uh, in the, the proposal, uh, this is this form. So this is, uh, uh, okay, original strength lambda, okay? And uh, by uh, probability P, we change it lambda over A. And often, A equal one half is used. And uh, the other parameter is that, okay, uh, the size of bootstrap sample. It is all also uh, the, uh, this parameter one half uh, of the original size is used. Okay, then uh, the, this is from their papers and uh, this is some, uh, the synthetic experiment, right? Actually, uh, the, there are uh, two, 200 explanatory variables and Blocks are in irrelevant one, so not uh, has influence for the output uh, the, uh, uh, X of the variable. And, and uh, oh, these are the all, uh, okay, this. And blue also irrelevant, so not has influence to the output, but has some correlation for the relevant variable, red one, okay? So in the case of that, we do not introduce the randomization of lambda. This has some peculiar behavior in the uh, solution passes, uh, stability passes. So this is uh, plotted by the active probability, right? So although the, this is irrelevant variable, the blue one, so it has a very, high probability around here. So it is difficult to distinguish that this is uh, relevant or irrelevant. But introducing the randomization of lambda, the, the curve uh, clearly separated with, uh, from the red one. So we can clearly uh, distinguish the relevant one and irrelevant one. So, so this makes the Lasso estimation more robust than the naive one. So good, but computationally demanding to this method. Actually, uh, evaluating accurately the, the active probability uh, needs a lot of resampling, usually more than 1,000. So the naively doing this requires 1,000 times of that of naive Lasso. So we want to reduce this computational cost by using our approximation of algorithm. So uh, we, uh, yes, based on the, our algorithm, we developed the uh, uh, semi-analytic resampling method for the stability selection, like this. And uh, check the, uh, its usefulness by the numerical experiment. The first one is the synthetic data. We assume that this model so just a linear model uh, with this, right? And we set the stability section parameter, uh, like the, uh, their proposals, and uh, compared semi-analytic resampling our method and direct resampling, okay? Our method is coded by the MATLAB, are not optimized, okay? And numerical direct simulation is GLMNet. This is an optimized one. And uh, the stability pass uh, that we use the uh, 1,000 times resampling for the direct simulation. 
then we can get it. The first one is the comparison of the uh, 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 comparison uh, with the active probability between the approximate algorithm and the direct resampling. Actually, there are two data are propped here, but almost overlap. We cannot distinguish the two. So uh, this means that uh, the approximate algorithm is um, uh, actually very accurate estimate for the, this synthetic data, at least. And you can show that the two curves, this is relevant, uh, the entries, this is four or the irrelevant data set. And you can see that these two groups are clearly separated. So we can accurately uh, uh, select the relevant variables from this type of plot. And this panel shows the computational time, actual, actual computational time, right? And this, uh, yes, asterisk shows the, uh, that for the direct simulation. And the other is a, a semi analytic one, okay? And this, uh, the straight line is a slope too. Actually, the, the Lasso method uh, requires uh, all, all the probabilities in a square, right? But using the MATLAB, they have some, some, some trick. Still, it has a lower computation cost, but probably if n is very large, this provides a, this type of, uh, slope too, right? But then, still, uh, we have a, a lot of gain in the computa computational cost. We can save the cost of computation by the uh, our, uh, by the approximate algorithm. The second validation is by the real data. Uh, we took, uh, take from, uh, took from uh, the wine quality data set from uh, this re repository. Uh, this is composed by the objective variable uh, of 10 grades evaluation from, uh, for white wine's taste. Uh, this is given by the blind check by a professional uh, sommelier. And uh, the data size is uh, uh, quite large, about 5,000, only white, white wine. And explanatory variables are uh, chemical constituents, such as density, acid, sugar, something, right? The, this is the result uh, the, of the active probability of the uh, uh, 11 entries. And Circle denotes uh, uh, our approximate algorithm and asterisk is direct, uh, result, uh, direct resampling, okay? You can see it, uh, that this oh, the same color uh, shows the same uh, component, okay? You can see that all the cases, uh, we can uh, uh, classify the entries into two uh, classes by a certain criterion. But both cases, you can show that very good uh, the uh, agreement with this, and somewhat a bit uh, has a discrepancies. But totally a fairly good agreement with between the approximate algorithm and the directory sampling. Okay, so very happy. Okay, so we can say that the developed approximate algorithm exhibits fairly good approximation accuracy when correlations between the explanatory variables are not so strong. But unfortunately, still it can fail in providing accurate estimates of bootstrap averages when correlations of explanatory variables are not negligible. So uh, we actually uh, applied our method, algorithm, for all the data of the riboflam, so the, uh, of the original paper. Then we found that the accuracy is not so good or bad, okay? This is the first moment, second moment, and uh, uh, active probability. So if the, uh, our algorithm accurately evaluates the direct resampling, we should have the uh, straight line here, okay? But it has a very uh, large outliers, and also it has outliers and scattered. So not so good. So we extend 
the, our method to a, a more uh, accurate algorithm. So for handling the correlated cases, we extend the replica-based algorithm to expectation propagation or the vector approximated message passing bump. And this is because uh, these are empirically known to offer more accurate estimates than BP or MP when uh, the correlations are uh, rather strong. And in the rest of the time, we introduce its out outline. So what is expectation propagation or bump, uh, vector uh, approximation passing? This is uh, originally uh, proposed by the Minka, uh, 2001. Uh, roughly speaking, this is a combination of the belief propagation and the approximation by the exponential family. And the exponential most of the case, Gaussian. And the empirically can uh, the, is accurate inference, even when the couplings are statistically correlated. Okay, let's explain by a simple example of the Ising spin. Normally, if you have uh, this model, you draw this type of bipartite graph, okay? But we have another choice, this choice. In this expression, we hand the bunch of the factors, or we den denote a bunch of the factors by a single node. Here, these, uh, the collection of these are in this figure, Right? Just represented by a single node. And also the bunch of the, these factors, factorized factors, are denoted by a single node. And the correction of the variables here are represented by the single node. So we can use another expression of the graph. Okay? So in the expectation propagation, we use this graph without, instead of this one. The good point of this graph is that if we employ BP, this graph is exact result. It is trivial because this graph represents exact calculation. So it is trivial that it is an exact result. But unfortunately, this is computationally hard since we have the interaction and the uh, non-trivial uh, uh, distribution, non-near distribution, even if this is factorized. But the computational difficulty can be resolved by a factorized Gaussian approximation. Okay, this is the idea. So the computational difficulty is resolved by the Gaussian approximation. So, to do this, uh, we uh, uh, introduce three types. Okay, three type of approximation. Okay, this is the original form, and here we replace this factor by the factorized approximation. And the second approximation, we replace the coupling factors by the factorized uh, Gaussians. A third one is the, uh, the combining these two. Then what we should do is to how to determine the parameters lambda and gamma for each approximation. For this, we impose moment matching requirement. Uh, for three approximations, we can get expression of the first and uh, second moment, and they are sh should be equal. So we impose that this is a requirement for this. And this provides the condition to determine the, these parameters for the approximate message. Then we can get the uh, expectation propagation for the simplified system, like this. So just repeat one to four many times until convergence. Right? Then after, uh, have, uh, after having the convergence solution, we can get the first moment, like this. Basically, we apply the algorithm for the generalized reason model. But there is a remaining uh, problem, okay? For employing, uh, employing uh, expectation propagation, 
the target distribution should be of the form of exponential of some quadratic uh, form times factorized distribution. The target distribution should be of the form of this. But unfortunately, original GLM is not of, the, of this form. Okay? This is, okay, this is like this. So, not exponential of quadratic. Okay? But we can convert the expression for this form by introducing the delta function and the expression of the Fourier uh, by the Fourier transform. Okay? Then we finally get the form of the exponential quadratic. Or this is bilinear form, but a bilinear form is a special case of a quadratic form. So, no problem. And factorize. This firstly introduced the technique by Open Windsor 2001. Then we can introduce the EP or vector approach to message passing for this GLA. So we first draw this bipartite graph and the replication plus average with respect to the resampling and randomization of lambda. So, and take the limit n0 and beta infinity, finally we get this complicated algorithm. Okay? But uh, uh, principally like this. Okay, check. So, uh, to validate our, uh, the utility of our viable, uh, algorithm, uh, we applied our method for the synthetic data and the real data. The synthetic data is a random selection of the low, uh, random row selection of the uh, discrete cosine transform. Okay? It is a problem of the complex sensing. And uh, the other one is the uh, Dibofram data from the uh, Meinstein Bloom. Then you can see that both cases, uh, blue one, uh, uh, the synthetic data by changing the number of uh, the data size. Uh, the data size. And the red one is uh, liboflamine for the real data. For both cases, you can see the exponential decay. So very fast convergence in the iteration. Okay. The second one is that, uh, okay, this Panels show the uh, co uh, comparison between the uh, result of the, of the approximate algorithm and directory sampling. And top is uh, for the synthetic data, and the bottom uh, uh, the riboflamine data, real data. So you can see that for the first moment, second moment, active probability, all the cases for both of the synthetic data and the real data, we have a very good, considerably good approximation accuracy. Yes. So I think that, uh, so we think that this is promising approach for the real data, not, all for the, uh, not only for the synthetic data, artificial data. So summary. So uh, in this talk, we develop a semi-analytic resampling algorithm for a generalized linear model based on the message pass, two types of message passing algorithm. First one is the uh, belief propagation, and second one is the expectation propagation. And, and both are combining with, combined with the replica method. And a good point, bad point. The good point of the first one is the low computational cost. It is uh, work by order MN, and uh, the size time, uh, the number of extra-planet variables per update, so fast. But not necessarily uh, accurate when uh, the extra-planet variables are strongly correlated. So resolve this. A drawback, we extend the method for the EP. So a good point is that empirically, conservative good approximation accuracy, even for the real data. But also we have a bad point, drawback, high computational cost. It requires, in general, order n cube per update. So maybe the, depending on the, uh, the situation, uh, we should uh, select either of them, okay. And we showed the usefulness of the algorithm for the application to the stability selection method. And uh, this provides a stable variable selection method 
uh, based on resampling. And uh, we have a future study that application to various real data analysis. Okay. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is a reference of the, our work.